What's the story behind the Chicago Purple Line Express? This is the story of three train lines, red, brown, and purple. These three are part of the bigger Chicago L system. The brown line runs from Kimball into the loop downtown. The red line runs from Howard, shortly parallel to the brown line, underground through downtown, and finally down to 95th Street. The purple line is the shortest line in the L network. It runs from Howard north to Linden, running through the cities of Evanston and Wilmette, Illinois. The purple line is less than four miles long. Now the red line and the brown line decided to have a baby. I guess that's what happens when two lines get a little too close to each other. They wanted a line that would have the best traits of both of them. So they went to upstairs neighbor purple for advice. Purple, who was tired of being called the shortest, came up with the following plan. Brown, here's the deal. Kimball's great, but more people want to go to Howard. That's why Red's trains are so busy. Red grinned, but Purple said, Red, not so fast. You've got issues too. For one, you have way too many stops. People want to get to Howard fast. Second, some people want to go into the loop instead of your underground stations. So Purple proposed that after Howard, he would run down the red line as an express until Belmont, where he would switch tracks and join the brown line into the loop. Both brown and red loved the plan, but they were afraid of what would happen if Purple got too much power. So they agreed on one condition. Purple would only run on weekday rush hours. Other than that, he would stay on his short line between Howard and Linden. Okay, so obviously that's not really what happened, but that story is a good illustration of how the Purple Line Express functions, a combination between red and brown. In this video, we're first gonna talk about the history of the Purple Line Express, and then we're gonna ride the whole line from the loop all the way up to Linden. Of course, this is what the CTA map looks like today. But in the year 1900, the Chicago L was made up of different companies that shared a combined loop downtown. The line that I've colored red on this map is the Northwestern Elevated Railroad, a company that opened in 1900 and ran between the loop and Wilson Station. By 1908, a branch to Kimball had opened and the main line had extended to Linden in Evanston. This is what is now the purple, red, and brown lines. In the 1940s, the State Street subway opened and some trains were diverted to that line. In 1947, the CTA took over all L operations. Today, it is red line trains that use the State Street subway, whereas brown and purple line trains continue to use the original tracks opened in 1900 by the Northwestern Elevated. Now it's time to ride the Purple Line Express. Purple Line Express trains in the afternoon start running south from Linden a little bit after 2 p.m. This train has just reached the loop and is turning to take the loop clockwise. Brown Line trains, which share the tracks before this intersection, will continue going straight and take the loop counterclockwise. In the loop, the Purple Line trains share tracks with the Green Line, Pink Line, and Orange Line. Washington and Wells is the last station on the loop for the Purple Line Express. The train continues straight and crosses the Chicago River. This is my favorite section on the entire L system. After the river, we immediately stop at Merchandise Mart, a station we share with the Brown Line. After about 10 minutes, we arrive at Armitage Station where the Red Line trains have emerged from the State Street subway and run in the inner tracks. is next. Doors open on the left at Fullerton. Red Line trains don't stop at Armitage, but a cross-platform transfer is available at the major interchange station of Fullerton. So this is Fullerton Station. This is the first station where you can transfer from the brown and purple lines onto the red line. Now brown and purple have three more stops until Belmont, but red trains take the inner tracks and go straight to Belmont non-stop. So the irony of this short section is that for just a few stops, 
it is actually the red line trains running express and not the purple line trains. But after Belmont, the tables will turn. To be honest, between the loop and Belmont stations, the purple line feels nothing like an express. The tracks are old and curvy, so the trains operate slow. The train also makes frequent stops at stations that are spaced close together. This is Wellington. Immediately before Belmont Station, our train switches over from the outer track into the inner track, now sharing tracks with the red line. On the right, you'll notice the flyover that carries brown line trains over the red and purple tracks towards Kimball. This is a brand new piece of infrastructure that opened in November 2021. Before that, brown line trains had to physically cross over the red and purple tracks to go towards Kimball, something that would cause many delays. The first stop the Purple Line Express makes after Belmont is Wilson Station. Along the way, we will be skipping two intermediate stops, Addison and Sheridan. The first stop, Addison, is located right next to Wrigley Field, the home of the Major League Baseball club, the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs are kind of a big deal in Chicago. On game days, the buses will say, Go Cubs, on the destination indicators. What you may be noticing looking out the front is that this is a quadruple track section but that only two tracks are in use. This is because of a major construction project along part of the red line. More on that in a little bit. We are now about to arrive at Wilson Station and right before Wilson, we move over to what feels like the wrong side of the tracks. Wilson is a beautiful, recently redeveloped station that serves as the only intermediate stop on the purple line between Belmont and Howard. As you can see, the platform on the other side looks fine, but is actually not in use. All passengers heading both north and south, red and purple, have to use the two western platforms. By the way, Wilson is also home to the craziest ramp that I have ever seen. Once we leave Wilson, we are on our way to Howard. Now, why are we using the two western tracks, and why are two tracks out of service? This has to do with the red-purple modernization project, one of the many projects currently going on on the red line to improve the service for passengers. For this project, two stations, Lawrence and Bryn Mawr, have been completely demolished and will be rebuilt from the ground up. To facilitate this construction and other route modernization projects, currently only two tracks are in service. We can see this at Argyle Station. Normally, this would be the red line southbound track, but right now it is the red and purple northbound track. Construction isn't expected to end until 2024, so until then, red and purple will have to share tracks between Belmont and Thorndale. Speaking of Thorndale, that's the next station we're approaching, and now we can finally make our way onto the outer express tracks because this section is quadruple tracked. And from here until Howard, the Purple Line Express makes some serious speed, which we will show you in just a little bit.
Now, the CTA did not give its lines color names until 1993. Before that, express trains between the Loop and Evanston were known as the Evanston Express. Intermediate stations have changed throughout the past two. Sometimes they stopped at Morse and Loyola, and there was even a time when the Evanston Express didn't have any intermediate stations between Howard and Merchandise Mart. Here's Howard. Howard is a major interchange station on the north side of Chicago. South Boulevard is next. Doors open on the left at South Boulevard. Your safety is important. If you observe unattended packages, vandalism, or suspicious activity, inform CTA personnel immediately. Howard serves as the terminus for red line trains, yellow line trains, and purple line trains on weekdays off peak and on the weekends. So the route from here to final stop Linden is used by all purple line trains no matter what time it is. But first we have to cross over Howard Yard. Howard Yard is a very large train yard just north of Howard Station and it is the reason why purple, red, and yellow line trains share a map because the trains kept in Howard Yard can be used on any of these services. We briefly align with the Metro Union Pacific Northwest Line, which offers transfers at Main Station and Davis Station. All intermediate stations on this section of the Purple Line are in Evanston, Illinois, with the Terminal Howard being in Chicago and Linden being in Wilmette. The line was given the color purple because of Northwestern University, which is in Evanston, Illinois. Of course, Northwestern's colors are purple. If you don't count express service, the purple line is the shortest line in the CTA network, being only four miles long. And so we're almost at our final destination, Linden. But I wanna talk a little bit about express service on the Chicago L before we arrive. Currently, the purple line express is the only express, but the CTA used to have a very interesting stopping pattern system. Train stations used to be labeled with an A, B, or AB. A trains on a line would only stop at stations marked A or AB, and B trains would only stop at stations marked B or AB. The Evanston Express operated separate from this. We are standing waiting for signal clearance. We expect you to move shortly. Please stop at We have made it all the way up to Wilmot, Illinois, and we're waiting to enter Linden Station. This is the northernmost section of the Chicago L network, and up here the train crosses a few railroad crossings. This is Linden Station. As you can see, it's a pretty nice station. You're protected from the elements in here. And this is the terminus of the Purple Line. So this track connects to a loop into the yard. 
this track just ends here. Immediately outside of the station, I saw this adorable baby bunny. He let me get pretty close, so I got a good shot of him. So this is Linden Avenue, after which the station is named. The weirdest thing about it is that that's an L station, and this is an affluent Chicago suburb. For some reason, those two seem like things that can't be in the same place, but here in Wilmette, they can. So I live in the city, and I take the L to travel around the city, so to me, the Chicago L has this very busy urban connotation. And so it's kind of strange to step out of that rapid transit system and be in such a serene and green suburban neighborhood. But let's explore the area around Linden Station a little bit. This building is the Baha'i House of Worship, and while an impressive building, it feels even more out of place in this suburban neighborhood than the L station does. This area also has a beautiful beach, as well as a yacht club and a coast guard station. So what's weird about this is it feels like I'm in the heart of American suburbia mixed with a little bit of a coastal town charm. And to think that I got here taking the Chicago L. It feels like I'm in a different country, but it's still accessible by the city subway system. Anyways, that was the Purple Line Express. Kind of an oddity among all the L lines. Definitely a fun and fast ride up north. Also beautiful downtown and convenient if you have to go to the Lincoln Park area. Thank you so much for watching. We're based here in Chicago now, so there's gonna be lots more cool content from Chicago, as well as other parts of America and the world. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to Trains Are Awesome because we'd love to have you join us again next time.